We started building some basic keyboard interactions with the CPX, like pressing a button on the CPX and having that send a key over to the laptop. Now let's try to take advantage of the built-in sensors, for example, the accelerometer. I programmed the CPX so that when I tilt it to the left, the red lights turn on the left side, and when I tilt it to the right, similarly red lights turn on on the right side. And so this is giving us information about the tilt of the board, and we can translate that also to keyboard input. So when I tilt to the left, I'm going to have that press down on the left arrow, and when I tilt to the right, it's going to press down on the right arrow. And I can use that to, well, actually I'm using up and down arrows, but it's all the same. I'm using up and down because that's what this game needs. So let's go try that out. Let's see, where's my mouse? It's over there. So I'm gonna hit blow. I'm gonna already start, we're already starting. So whoops. So now we have this really kind of cool, smooth interaction where, and we'll see how bad I am at this game. Oh, okay. Um, where, where, whoops. I'm able to control the location of the paddle based on the tilt of Oh, I got one. Come on. And I got it in. Based on the tilt of, yeah, of this. And we could play around a bit with the sensitivity. There is a little bit of lag, which makes it hard. But it's really interesting to be able to use the accelerometers, or we could even use light or temperature or other things and translate that into keyboard input. So that's what we're going to do next. So let's prototype an interactive controller that takes advantage of some of the CPX's built-in sensors and translates that over to keyboard commands. In fact, we're gonna actually work with the accelerometer and the accelerometer, we can go into the Adafruit reference here. It gets the acceleration value in milli G force in one of three dimensions, X, Y, or Z. And milli G is one one thousandth of a G. A G is as much acceleration as you get from Earth's gravity. Well, what does that all mean? There is this constant force that we're getting from gravity that allows us to use the accelerometer, not just to measure movement, but actually to measure orientation. So we'll see, we'll be able to measure when the board is tilting left or right, and then do things with that. So let's get started. The first thing we might wanna do whenever we're playing out around with a new sensor is just to graph it and take a look at it in our console. So um, here we're gonna use acceleration. I did that pretty quickly, I went to input, and then I found, I scrolled down and saw acceleration. You can always use the search feature as well to look here. So the first thing we should do is, so drag this out and console log value. We will print this out. I'm gonna copy and paste this three times. We'll look at the signal from X, Y, and Z. where X is gonna be left or right if the board is facing you, and I'll, I'll show you this, and then Y is, is gonna be away or towards you, and then Z is that downward vector on it. So that's the three dimensions. So I've got this, I wanna, da I wanna download it to my CPX, which I've done. And now let's take a look at the graph. So as I'm moving this around, so let's see if I can keep it relatively planar with the table. And I'm going to go left, see how the X switches in pink, and I'm going to go right. And it actually looks like they're printing out the exact same thing. So let me see, maybe I made a mistake. I did. I'm printing out X. I'm printing out all X. Just zoom in here. I'm printing out all, I was printing out all X's for this. So I'm switching this over now to that, and then we're going to download it again. See, this is why we want to use the council. All right, show device. Okay, so now let's keep it nice and stable. Left, right, down, up, left, right. And then we can flip it over. I, I'm not showing the Z. We'd have to actually scroll. So... That's the Z, I just flipped it over. And it might even be easier to see this graphed all in one. Um, or maybe if I, if I try doing this and holding it up here and going, okay, so here's left, right. Here's pointing away from me and towards me. 
Okay. Um, but let's graph that all together. You might remember how we did this before. So I could just take these out and I'm going to use a join statement so that we're graphing X, Y, and Z all together um, on the same graph. Um, so we'll use that join statement if you remember. So we're going to do like X comma Y comma Z. Um, and we still need to have a council out. So we do this, we do that, and we will bring this over. So we'll print X. And then we need that comma, if you remember. And then we're going to do y. And then we need a comma. It's getting a little bit long, it's true. But we've got this. Um, we need one more little space. So let's move these other ones around. These are not being used currently. So it's going to be very similar as before. But now we're going to graph all the x and y, z acceleration together on the same graph. It'll maybe make it easier to see. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so let's go and take a look. I'm gonna put, all right, so see now X, Y, and Z. Now the question is, of course, what's X, what's Y, what's Z? Well, we could probably figure it out. Um, moving to the left. So it looks like green is, our X, and then I'm gonna point down towards me. So it looks like that purple is Y. And then if I flip the board over, we can see that that orangish red is the Z. So we figured it out. So there you go. All right, next step. We are gonna tilt it to the left and we're gonna turn on the lights on the left and then we're gonna tilt to the right and we're gonna turn on the lights on the right, and uh, so let's do that. Uh, I suppose we can keep printing stuff out if we want. Um, so there is this built-in gesture recognizer, like on shake. Uh, it also has other things, and this is using the accelerometer. So see, it has on tilt left. So if we tilt left, we're gonna turn on those lights, and if we tilt right, we can turn on those lights. So let's do that. So we can go light, show ring. I'm going to have to move myself, I think, so that you can continue to see the program. On tilt left. So that means boop, 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 boop. And on tilt right. We will do the same thing, but we are going to make the... So the idea here is that we tilt left, we turn it all red uh, on the left side, we tilt right. In fact, we could test it in our simulator. See, whoa, I'm using the mouse. You can test it in the simulator, that's kind of cool, eh? So let's download that and see if we can get it to work. Hello. No, there's always a question. Did I get the newest code? Unclear, unclear. Let's go back. I'm gonna to try to download it. All right, it appears that I did. On tilt left, on tilt right, on tilt left. Okay, let's try that again. Focus your attention. Okay, so on tilt left, on tilt right, there we have it, on tilt left. Come on, you can do it. On tilt right, on tilt left, on tilt right. So very simple, and you'll see we don't actually have a lot of control over what is considered a tilt. Uh, so we might actually want to use the raw x values. Um, so we should go back to just like maybe graphing that, and then we can kind of play around with it and make, make this slightly more complicated where we're turning on the lights based on the X position or the X acceleration value. So let's do that next. Oops. Let's go home. Oops. No, we don't want to go home. No, no, no. Okay. So we want to go back. And um, so we're not going to use these tilts anymore. We're going to kind of redo that. Um, 
with with a way that gives us more control. So I'm sort of starting over. Um, maybe before I do that, I should just I'll save this, which is basic tilt program live demo. And I'll hit share and copy and paste so that we have it. And then I'm going to write it down. Basic tilt program. All right. So yeah, so you, you saw I was starting to just strip away stuff. So I guess I could just start over. Uh, I'm going to start over. Excuse me as well. All right. New project. Don't, don't fear. Don't fear. And here we're just, we want more control. So the first thing we should do is we should just output the X value just to get a sense. What does it look like? So we're going to take acceleration in the X and we're just going to download that and take a look. Like, does the value go up when I go left or down when I go left and so on and so forth. So let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going left, and it goes to negative 1,023, essentially. I go right, and it goes to about 1,023. So negative 1,023 to 1,023. Woo, and it's super responsive. Look at that. Super awesome. So left is negative, right is positive. I can remember that. I remember that. How, what should we do to take advantage of that, to make a more responsive sensor? Well, we have to consider, what do we consider a tilt, a significant tilt? Maybe we should say 100 in each direction, negative 100? Is that about right? So let's try that. We just, we're going to look for negative 100 on the x value. And then we will sell, set the lights themselves. So we need some conditions. We need some conditions. Um, we're going to say if... Should I go to my whiteboard? Should I go to my whiteboard? Maybe we should go to the whiteboard. Let's do it. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay. Can I draw a CPX? Circle part is easy. Then we've got some kind of connector here and the USB here and we're going to whoosh, whoosh. I'm not going to draw all the pads but okay so that's let's say rough drawing of a CPX. Now we just saw that if you tilt it this way and that's that's the X so we have X is this way and that way is what we saw. And we also obviously we saw that the Y was this way and that way and then Z was pointing downwards, but we're just focusing on the X. So we saw that if I go that way, it's 1,023. And if I go that way, let's see, it's all the way to 1,023. And then somewhere over here, this is fully, this here is fully, tilted left and here is fully tilted right. This is left. This is right at 1,023. So basically as you're tilting that value is going down here all the way until you've got your board like this. And then you go over here and that X value goes up. That's what we were seeing on the graph. We should, basically we need to decide at what point do we call that a tilt left? And I think we should say one, negative 100. And then here we have to decide at what point should we have it, you know, should we define a tilt right? And I think we should say 100. And that's somewhat arbitrary. We could play with that. And then there's a question of, well, what, what's in this space, right, between negative 100 and 100? Well, that's no tilt. That's no tilt. 
So we have a no tilt between negative 100 and 100. So let's give that a shot. Let's see what that looks like when we're actually programming it. Okay? We can do it. Hmm. Okay. Negative 100. Maybe we write it down, hey? We can do that. Add comment. Negative 100 tilt left, positive 100 tilt right. Just to help remind us. So let's take, we know we need to use that accelerometer value again. So let's go find that. And the X, we're working on X. We're working on X and we need to do some conditionals. We need to say if, if that value is less than 100, then we're in that tilt left state. So that means we need to do some logic. If that acceleration is less, that's what we said, less than negative 100, then we're tilting left, then we're tilting left. And we're gonna put out some immediate output. Go boink. So we're just doing that same kind of, so the lights will turn, turn red when you tilt it left, okay? And actually, we could just test this in the simulator. Whoop. Already it starts to work. Ah, now you see, well, it always is now red. Once it toggles, that's because we're not done. So we need to also have this um, additional thing, which is we're not done here. We have to copy and paste this. If the accelerometer is greater than 100, then what? Well, we said just here, if it's greater than 100, then we're tilting to the right. So let's do that. Ah. Put red, red here. Now we can test it again and see what happens. Red, Ooh, look at that. Of course, there isn't this middle state. This middle state, what if it's in this middle state? Then we wanna kind of clear the lights. And what I suggest we do is we say, set all pixels to blue, is we're in this nice state here where we're not tilting. So it's blue if we're not tilting, right? And again, these, these 100 values, I was just experimenting, looking at the graph and seeing, we could tweak that if we want. So let's, let's look at this now actually on the, oops, I have to hit download on the CPX. And you know, it's so much more responsive, right? And if I put it down blue, can I actually also show the, so here's the graph. Can you look at two things at once? Now you might say, okay, well, what happens if we change that range? You know, we, we had it to 100. What if we made it to like 500? Well, then I'm gonna have to tilt it far more severely, right? So I'll show you. Maybe go here, eh? This is where I am. Let's go back. So let's say 500. And we know it only goes to 1,000. So this is almost half of the way. So maybe I'm going to be like at 45 degree angles or something, something like that. Now let's download this one. And here we expect that I'm going to have to go far more than before, right? Because I'm, even though I'm tilted to the left here, a fairly significant amount, it's still blue. I'm still in that neutral state. So that's how we can kind of tweak stuff. Now we've got this tilting thing working. I'm going to go back and maybe set it to 200 or something. Now we can have it send keyboard commands. So if I tilt left, then we send a left key. If we tilt right, we send a right key. All right, so let's do that. We totally got this. Should I call this something maybe first? Um, real time tilt tester, real time tilt tester. No, I don't know.
Okay. Now, what did we say? We are gonna, I'm gonna make this different. I'll say 200 and 200 or, yeah. And then we'll update this just so we, we can remember. Um, now we're gonna send the, the keyboard commands, right? So let's go extensions, keyboard, and then keyboard and it's a function key to go left. So left arrow press. Right arrow press. That looks pretty good. And then um, I'm also going to do where you hit A or B and I'm going to have it send over a, um, a space bar. And maybe for that we do light and just show a frame of the beautiful rainbow. Oh, I see. Whoops. I'm not showing you the actual. Sorry about that. There you go. All right. So button B. So we're just saying if I either hit button A or button B, it'll send a space because I want to play Gal Galaga again um, using this tilt stuff. So let's download. And then we have Galaga here. And it looks like it's paused, maybe. So let's hit play. And are we actually moving? No, we're not moving. So something is up. Let's go back to our our code. Oh, we never, it doesn't appear as though we actually downloaded it. So let's. I'm just copying it over to C Play Boot right now. Okay. I was just testing it, and I'm going to show you what I was doing. All right. Um, I, I, I downloaded it. I made sure. I copied copied it over to the board. And, um, and if you can notice in the URL bar, you see how the cursor is moving? So I was just, like, testing it like that. Okay. So now we can actually play Galaga. <laughs> I think. Oh, no. Game over. Okay. Can I play again? Hit miss ratio 100%. That's that's not so good. Okay, let's see this again. You get it. So, oh come on. You're like, well, why isn't he moving fast? And the reason is, again, I'm only sending one key press with the arrow every time I go to the right. And so I'm not like getting the smooth movement. I'm just like, ee, 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 right? Because every time I tilt it, so that's why I'm not getting the, if I actually use the keyboard, you're not getting that smooth movement. So now the question is, how can we do that? How can we update this program to give you more smooth keyboard input? So... Um, and let's just call this something too. I'm going to save this. Real time tester live demo was the last one. And now it's. Oops. Yeah, real-time tilt tester, live demo. Okay, so that's that's great.
Okay, I'm just saving it so we can post it. Okay, but what do we need to do now? We need to make that smooth. It's the same thing. We need to have it press down and then lift up. And so we, we could change this so that this says press down. And then I think that okay, okay, so we're gonna have to do some state tracking here in order to get this to work. So if we do down, we're gonna have to tell it when to go up. All right, so let's try this. We're gonna do some state tracking. We're gonna need a variable, make a variable. We'll just try it with the left side first. And this will be called um, left arrow down. Left arrow down, okay. And we're, we're gonna initialize that in an on start. Go back to variable, set left arrow to zero. I like to have these be Booleans. I think maybe the only way to do that is in JavaScript. So we have to say a left arrow down is false. And then if I come back here, yeah, set, set left arrow down to false, okay. So then I've got to set it to true when we actually press down the arrow. So set left arrow down to true. And then I need to check it both in here and in here. So I need a, another if block In here, I need to say, if the left arrow is down, then I've got to release it. So if I go back to this part, so let's say I need another if block. So that's logic if variable left arrow down. If left arrow down, then we've got to send a keyboard function left arrow up. Oh no. Okay, can we just take a look at this? Is this gonna to be too small on your screens? I'm zooming out. We have this state tracker now for left arrow down. We set it to false when the program starts. When we tilt past our threshold of negative 200, we set this, we send over left arrow down press, and we set that left arrow down state tracker to true. And then here in this blue part, in this neutral zone, we check to see if that left arrow is down. If it is, then we release, if we're in the neutral zone, then we've got to release the key, right? The only thing that we didn't do here though, is we've got to reset our state tracker. So let's do that here. Set left arrow down to false, right? Because we're lifting up. So that should, now if we tilt, it should keep the left arrow down and it, the whole time. So let's try it. Let 
I'm just copying it over. Okay, right now. Okay, and I'm testing it again in the URL bar above me. You can see. Okay, so I'm now gonna show this. We can uh, we can go back to well game over. Let's see if I, I'm only gonna be able to move left here, <laughs> naturally, like whoop. But this will be a step in the right direction. So I should be able to like nicely move to the left now. Oops, click. Yeah, see, I can. But then I can't really move to the right. So we just have to do the same thing with the right. And then that is the ticket, right? So we need another variable to track. It's true. We need to have right arrow down. And we're going to say set that. Also, we're going to set that to false originally the right arrow will be false originally and then we'll basically do the same thing as we did before so for the right arrow we're going to change that to a down and then we're going to set the state tracker we've now crossed that threshold we'll set the state tracker here set right arrow to true And this assumes that you can immediately go from the left to the right arrow, which I think is fine because we're sort of going a little slowly and I think you have to go into that neutral state. Um, so that's fine. So if left arrow down, then this, so we could say else if right arrow down. So let's copy and paste that, put that here. If right arrow down, Then we're going to lift up the right arrow up and we're going to set the right arrow down to false because we're in this neutral zone. So I think that's basically, I think that's basically all we have to do. And now we can play Galaga. Galaga. Let's do it. Download. When I turn on the keyboard extension, my ability to download directly to the board kind of gets messed up. And so that's probably also happening to you, at least on Windows. So I'm dragging over the program and I want to play Galaga again. Oh, look at that. Nice and smooth. Uh, no, I got stuck going to the right. Let's see. No, that's works. Or, no, I'm never going back to the left. Or maybe there's a flaw in my logic. Yeah, I'm never able to go back to the left. Oh, yeah, I am. Okay, so that seems pretty good. This is actually simpler than the way I, I had done it before in my own time. So I'm hoping this will actually work. Maybe I should do something that is lower stakes. Like up here in the URL bar. Ah, you know what? We aren't getting into that blue state. We aren't getting into the blue state, so we need more conditionals. Oh no, we're jumping directly. Ah, so this is going to be slightly more complicated. <laughs> I will post both versions of the code that I did here. This one and the one that I did in my own time, and you guys could decide what, which one is easier, because we need actually more conditional logic in here. If we are in here, 
we need to release the right arrow. So we need to have another if. Um, it's almost easier to do this in, in JavaScript, but I will try to do it. So like the, the first thing we do in here, oh, no, 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 we don't want to do that. The first thing we're going to do in here is, well, I guess it's maybe the last, but I'm going to, I'm going to eventually move it, which is if the right arrow is down. I've got to lift it up. Can I copy two things at once? Doesn't look like it. So if the right arrow is down, I've got to lift that key up. Right arrow, press up. And then I've also got to set the right arrow to false. Uh, make this easier for you to see. I'll get out of the way. It looks more complicated than it is, believe me. But basically, and I got to move this to the very top of this block. So if we're tilting left, then the first thing we check to see is, is the right arrow down? And if it is, we got to release that key and set the right arrow down state to false. And then we can do, then we can press the left arrow key down. So we got it. We're going to do the same thing, but down here. And for left arrow down, left arrow down, then we're going to say left arrow up and set left arrow to false. And I think that should fix stuff. Because I was sort of assuming that we would almost always get into this neutral state as we're transitioning the board from left to right and from right to left, but it doesn't look like it was responsive enough for that. So um, let's call this real time tilt input complex <laughs> lot demo because it is more complex than what we were doing before. All right, and uh, let's see, downloading it. Let's hit the green button or hit the reset button so I can copy it over. Go into the URL bar. Yeah, that looks, I think that looks better. I think that's more responsive. Let's see. The true test, of course, is Galaga. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's already better. Oh, okay. But then, and you can't even see what I'm doing, but see, I'm, okay. The only thing is now I'm hitting, hitting the button. Is the button's working? Okay, let's get a fresh start. Yeah, they got nothing. They got nothing on them. Move the mouse. And it's just, it's just way more fun to play with the accelerometer to, to control, to control the airplane and movement. So we did it. I mean, obviously, we could then put this inside of like an airplane. You can craft or cardboard in an airplane and turn this into like an airplane controller. I think that would be a lot of fun. Awesome, we did it. Um, the, the code was kind of complicated. I will post it. It's okay if you don't understand it fully. Um, you can go ahead and just use it yourself. All right. Thank you very much. Bye, prototypers.